All right, welcome to section one. In this section, we will talk about variables and operators. And it's very important how you declare your variables. That's how your programming starts, all right? But before going to the variables and operators, I want to show you some basic about how you write your text, how you display your text, how you write the comments, how you make the spaces. So the first thing I want to talk about is console log. So console log is the terminal window where you can log some values. So here you can see some examples. I have console.log, hello log, console.log 4 plus 10, some mathematic instruction, console.info and console.error. So you can imagine that when you have this string codes next to it, this is like a string. That's why its color is also changed to red. But if you write integer in between that, you will see the sum of this 10 and 14, you will see 14 in your terminal window. Okay, and if you type console.info instead of log, it will also display it like in white background. Even if you type console.error, it will show it as white, but it will be a text. This is quite different in uh, Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, if you log console.error, it's, it's red, but <laughs> in Node Red, it's coming as white as well. So let's go ahead and try these uh, console log functions here. So I have my function 30 here. So here I have written console.log, which we have seen in the last video. If I just type here info and I type here error. And in the last, I type instead of string, some number. You will see that JavaScript is a bit smart. It will automatically add that and display you the result in the console log. So let's click on done and deploy. And now when I see in my terminal, you can see that three outputs in string and one in integer all right so most of the time in my presentations i'm showing the terminal window for the output but what you can also do is you can also display the output in your debug window it's totally up to you for example if i want to show this hello code and compile in debug window you know that you have to bring that to message payload and then return the message so we will do in between some examples where i will show you results in debug window and in some examples we will show the results in console log it's totally up to you it's just how you display your output okay so whenever you want to display some information you can either use console log or you can use return message on your payload all right, so next one is indentation and white spaces. This is also very important. So if you don't add any spaces, this is one example how your code looks like. It's it, it's going to work, but it looks not easy to read. So for example, here you see without space, I declare a variable which is true, and then I use if statement, and then I log something, all right? So it's, it's but not easy to read. But if you use a space, then it will look something like that. And on top, if you use indent, then it will look something like that. It's just a visual representation of your code. And I recommend you that you use space and indent. Now, in some programming language, for example, Python, if you don't use indent, you will get some errors. Python will not understand what's going on. But in JavaScript, if your space and indents are not correct, it will still understand what's going on. So there are, there are different programming language with different rules. So in JavaScript, there is no rule about indent in space. You can use however you like. But recommendation is if you're writing a code, if you want to read it again, it should be readable, right? Or if you're sending this code to someone else, he can read easily if it's with space and indent. So I will show you how you can use this indent once we are writing if and else statement and we will understand more about so this is just a representation how you should write your code next is semicolon and comment this is very important you should always insert semicolon after a statement so here you can see that there is a variable let value which is true and we have a semicolon so make a habit of using semicolon in javascript it's very important and if you have some code block like if else statement there you don't need a semicolon so there there is a distinction here only for the statements you can see that here you have a semicolon but if you have a code block like if and else you don't need a semicolon here only in the statement right and if you're writing a comment there are two ways to do that one is you can do two times the symbol and then you can write your comment here and if you have multi-line comment it's better to write it like this with the star with the beginning and in the end. So this will also make it a comment. And it's very easy to realize when something is common because it's green. So for example, I open a function and let's say comment will also help you to debug your code easily. Let's say I don't want to show console.info. So I can put it like this and this becomes green, which means it's a comment. It will not come to the output. So if I now deploy it, I will have just two string outputs and one integer because the comment will not be executed by the JavaScript. So this is how 
you can add the comment and you can also add the comment for example i want to comment all of these three lines then i can do like this now this will make these my comments and only this statement will be executed so this is how you can add comments in your program and comments are very important for example to mention your program version who wrote this program on which date you wrote the program and if you're making some changes what changes did you do so this can be easily documented when you have a comment otherwise people will not understand what's happening so adding a comment is very good now let's do with our first function which i wanted to start with math.random and if you recognize in node red we have a random node here for example here we have a random node which we use to display a random number right for example i delete this one and if i open this one i have 0 to 10 and if i take now a debug and want to display the random number i will just get a random number all right but for that i'm using this node and i have to install this node from my manage palette i have to install random so for example if you see here this is already installed Okay, in my nodes, I have this random nodes. But this is a very simple function which you can just write in your function node. You don't need to install the nodes. So let's do that now. So this is what is explained in this slide. You have a function called math.random. Okay, this will give you a number between 0 and 1. So you have a function node and you can write math.random. And then you can return a message and you have this number here. But if you want a number between 0 to 100, you can multiply this by 100 and you have the number here. So let's try that. So you take a function node and you can just type message.payload is equal to math.random. And you can see that while you are typing, JavaScript is also telling you the complete function. You can just click on that. It makes it easy. Semicolon. And now by default, this math random is going to give you a number between 0 and 1. Don't forget that. And now here you can see that my number is coming also randomly and now if i want to have a number between 0 and 100 just multiply with 100 then you have between 0 and 100 super easy if you want a number between 0 and 50 multiply it by 50 and you have your random number between 0 and 50 very easy right and now you might be wondering if you don't want to have so many digits after the decimal point you can also reduce that okay this Perhaps I have explained that in the next slide. So here you have seen how you can easily create a random number. And most of the time, you also need to create a random number within a loop, right? In this case, this function will really help you. We will have uh, some exercises about arrays and in which we will create a random uh, digit arrays. And there we will use the method of random. So you will understand how easy it is to implement this function within the code instead of using a random node, all right? And now comes the next part, math.floor. All right, before coming to math.floor, I want to explain one more function. If I want to limit this decimal point, so what you can do is you can type, let me remove that 50. So dot two, and you can see that here is a function two fixed. And with this function, you have a parameter. And the parameter will define the number of digits you want after that. I will go for two. And once you do that and click on done, and now you will see you have only two decimal point. But strange enough, it converts the number to a string by default, which we don't want. But you can do that. You can further on put a bracket around this whole statement and type here number. By this, you convert string back to a number and click on deploy. And now you will see you have two decimal point and a number. And now if you want to convert that into from 0 to 100 this you can also do that by first converting the math.random to 0 to 100 and then fix it and then convert back to the number so you can see that how easy it is to get your output in random number using the functions and now the next command was math.floor it's a method to round up your value to largest integer less than or equal to a given number for example here we have math.random multiplied by 100 and the whole function is the math.floor so it will just round up the value okay and it will return the largest integer less than or equal to a given number so this function you can also use to round up your values furthermore you can also do round up by just using here zero which will also do the same because then you have no decimal points at all where you can see that now zero and one or what you can do is you can just take math.random multiply by 100 and put here math dot 
floor. This will also work for you and it will give you a number between 0 to 100 and round up. All right. So these are the different uh, commands which you have learned math.random and math.floor to create random numbers. All right. So this was about uh, introduction about how you can have some indent, how you can write comment. And you just, if you were practicing along the video, you just wrote a random number function, <laughs> not a function, but a statement. So you should be proud of yourself. Before we go to the next video, I would say keep practicing what I'm doing along with the video. This will really help you to uh, practice the whole course. And if you find the uh, statements or these functions or method interesting, keep a note in your notebook because there are going to be a lot of methods we're going to explore in JavaScript. So math.random and floor is one of my favorite one. In the next video, we are going to see about how you can declare the variables. Then there are t three types of variables, let, var, and const. So see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.